All right, so in this example, we want to know what mass of hydrogen gas is needed to fill a weather balloon to a volume of 10,000 liters at one atmosphere and 30 degrees Celsius. So no properties of the gas are changing. Uh, they just are asking about one of them, they're asking about the mass. And so I think I want to use uh, the PV equals NRT form of the ideal gas law. Now, of course, we're looking for the mass and there's no mass in the ideal gas law, but there is a moles, right? And because I know it's hydrogen gas, I know the molar mass. And so if I can find the moles, then I can convert that into the mass. So I'm looking for moles. So I want to rearrange this equation to solve for N. So I want to divide both sides by RT. So N is PV over RT. And we have the volume, we have the pressure, and we have the temperature. And of course, we always know R, so I have all the variables, but I want to be sure that everything is in the right units. So if I'm going to use R as uh, 0 0.08206, then the volume needs to be in liters, the pressure needs to be in atmospheres, and the temperature, of course, always needs to be in Kelvin. So the volume and the pressure are in the right units, but I need to convert the temperature to Kelvin. All right, so I think I have everything in the units that I need. So I can plug everything in. So the pressure is one, and I'm just gonna put in the numerical values. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the units off to the side. So the pressure, the volume, 10,000, R, and T. So for the units, I have atmospheres times liters, then divided by R, and R is a liter times an atmosphere, and then the mole dot Kelvin is on the other side, so that should go in the numerator, moles times Kelvin, and then temperatures in the denominator, so Kelvin should go in the bottom. Right, the atmospheres cancel, liters cancel, Kelvins cancel, so I'm left with moles, and that's what I'm solving for, so that's good. Uh, so when I do that math, I get that N is 402 moles. All right, they want mass, so I need the molar mass of H2. So 2 times 1.01, .01, that's 2.02 .02 grams per mole. So I'll take my 402 moles. And I get 812 grams. All right, so in the second example, we're given the volume uh, that a gas has at zero degrees Celsius. And we're told that the pressure is held constant. Uh, they want to know how much the temperature would need to rise to have a volume of 2.80 liters. Right, so obviously they want to know how much the temperature changes. Um, and of course the volume is changing. So when I, when I have changes in one of the properties and ask about how another one responds, that's where I want to go to the combined gas law form of the ideal gas law. So I'm looking at P1V1 over N1T1 equals P2V2 over N2T2. All right, they told me the pressure's a constant, so I know I can cancel that out. And then unless they specifically say, you know, we're adding more gas or we're taking gas away, we can pretty much generally assume that the moles aren't changing either. So N1 and N2 are the same, so those would cancel. And so, Right, we're then left with V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. Right, and they want to know how much the temperature has to rise to, so I need to know the final temperature. So I need to solve for T2. Right, so the first thing I want to do is get that out of the denominator. So I multiply both sides by T2. Right, now to get T2 by itself, I'll multiply both sides 
by T1, divide both sides by V1, and so I end up with T2 is equal to V2 times T1 over V1. All right, uh, now one of the nice things about the combined gas law is we're much more flexible on the units for the, the volume and for the pressure and the moles, as long as we're consistent in what we use for V2 and V1 or P2 and P1 or N2 and N1, we can really use whatever we want. Um, but the temperature uh, always has to be in Kelvin because otherwise we get you know the possibility of negative temperatures and that just messes everything up. So uh, the volumes, are both in liters, so as long as they're in the same units, they're fine, although liters are what we generally wanted in anyway. But for the temperature, the T1 needs to be in Kelvin. So zero degrees Celsius, we don't have to do the calculation. We should just know that's 273.15 Kelvin. So I think I have everything I need. Give myself a little bit more room here. So T2 is equal to V2, that was the final volume, 2.80 liters. T1 is 273.15 Kelvin. V1, the original volume was 2.57 liters. So the liters cancel. And when I do the math, I get my T2 is 298 Kelvin. Now we have to be a little bit careful. Uh, the question doesn't say what is the final temperature. They say how much would the temperature need to rise, right? So they're, what they're really asking is how much does the temperature change by? So they're asking for the change in temperature. So the change in temp temperature is the difference between the final temperature and the initial temperature. So So the change in temperature is 25 Kelvin, or of course, uh, changes in temperature are the same, whether they're Kelvin or Celsius. So it would also be fair to say that the change in temperature, or the temperature has to rise by 25 Kelvin or 25 degrees Celsius.